Hello friends, it's Talking Heads of Atascacita. My name is Amy Bridwell and I'm on the phone with Monsignor James Golosinski. Monsignor, I wondered, what are we going to talk about today? Well, because of the readings that we had at Mass today, I'm going to talk about, or we're going to talk about uh, the significance of appearances of our Lord after the resurrection. Mm, after the resurrection. Mm -hmm. The gospel today is one of my favorites. The road to Emmaus is, uh -huh. is one of my favorites because of the way that... Um, it unfolded. The uh, disciples were walking with our Lord. They were talking with our Lord, and yet they only recognized him at the breaking of the bread. That is eucharistically beautiful to me. All right. Well, let us begin with our usual prayer. Yes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And direct us, O oh Lord, in all our actions, our every work and prayer may begin with thee, and through thee be successfully completed through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, often when we are, are together like this, there are some saint feast that's being celebrated, and uh, I'll, I'll include that in the prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, today, we don't celebrate any uh, Saint Feast, and but there's somebody uh, who um, we don't even mention on this day who is very very significant. I'm talking about our Lord's mother. Oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know how old I was when I learned that there's good reason to think that. The first person our Lord appeared to after he rose from the dead was his mother. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with that theory. It is fitting that he would appear to Our Lady first, isn't it? Well, is there any... Um, you saw talking about being fitting, but is there anything we find there uh, in the Word that would sort of confirm it? Mm -hmm. confirm that it did take place. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that she was not with the other women in the morning on their way, uh, on Easter morning, on their way to the tomb, is an indication that she knew his body wasn't there. Oh, that's right. That's exactly right. Why wouldn't she have been with them? Yeah, that is the reason why the other women were going there. Mm -hmm. To anoint a dead body? Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, now, our Lord died in the afternoon on Friday. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in the joint practice, they calculated a day from sundown to sundown. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he died uh, in the afternoon. We don't know how much time passed from the time that he expired until Joseph of Arimathea got the okay to take his body, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it was late in the day. Mm -hmm. And they, people had to be home, or indoors anyway, before dark, because mm -hmm. that was part of the observance of the Sabbath. Right. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have uh, a lot of time to do a very, very important uh, job. Oh, in the anointing of the body. That's right. Well, mm -hmm. Whatever whatever the practices were, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've never heard anything about the Jewish practice other than that. They mm -hmm. uh, entombed the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So usually we talk about our Lord being buried. Mm -hmm. But strictly speaking, whenever I use the word bury, it's talking about, I'm talking about something being hidden in the ground. Mm -hmm. Whereas... Uh, that was not the Jewish practice. Right. And Joseph of Arimathea had hollowed out mm -hmm. a tomb mm -hmm. because the way the, the Jewish practice was they placed the body in a tomb mm -hmm. and then it decomposed. Mm -hmm. And after it was decomposed, then the bones were gathered up and placed into, a, I guess they called it an ossuary. Oh, okay. And I don't know what the what the typical practice was.
was mm-hmm. after that. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you see, it wasn't a burial, it was an entombment. Right. Mm-hmm. And what they would do would be they would roll a uh, stone, roll, let me put it like this, they would roll stone mm-hmm. to cover up the opening. Mm-hmm. Now, don't think of a boulder. Mm-hmm. Think of something shaped like a wheel. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Because the reason why uh, the tomb would be blocked, that was, that was the purpose of, of this stone, mm-hmm. uh, to protect you from animals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so in the morning, you know, what, was, what was the worry of the women as they were on their way to the tomb? Who's going to roll that back? Right. Mm-hmm. Because it was very, very, very heavy. Mm-hmm. And so, first of all, uh, we're talking about how uh, they found a sound reason to think that our Lord had appeared to her first. Mm-hmm. But who did he appear to second? Mary Magdalene? Well, mm-hmm. Yeah, the, not Mary Magdalene? Well, that's right. And then what? The, 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 <laughs> The disciples on the road to Emmaus. What we're talking about today, Amy, catch up. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know if uh, they were the uh, the third. Uh, it may have been. Remember, it's seven miles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a normal adult can walk about uh, a mile in 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about over a three-hour walk. Mm-hmm. So it may have been that he appeared to Peter, mm-hmm. to Peter before he appeared to the other two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he certainly had time. See, our, our passage today, the end of our uh, passage today, with, that we had in Mass, is the two disciples rushed back to Jerusalem with the good news. Mm-hmm. And they find out that our Lord, uh, the people in Jerusalem already knew about it. Mm-hmm. And they, and the people in Jerusalem said, well, he's, he's appeared to Simon. The uh, Lord right. has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, then the two recounted what had taken place on the way. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I think this is uh, very, very significant when it comes to the question of the primacy, huh? mm-hmm. the primacy uh, of the Peter, poem. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, there's some people you know, who are out of our faith will discard, Peter, discount Peter by saying, well, well, he was just one of the apostles and he really, really failed badly on mm-hmm. uh, Thursday, Thursday night mm-hmm. when our Lord was on trial before uh, Caiaphas. He sure did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's no mission of our Lord appearing to uh, other. Right. Uh, to the beloved. Other. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, to the other, let's say 10, because mm-hmm. Judas is no longer on the scene. Mm-hmm. In fact, the only other ones that we know that he appeared to, except when he appeared to the group uh, in the evening on Easter Sunday. Mm-hmm. in the upper room, uh, the only ones that we know were John and James. Mm-hmm. The other huh, the other eight, they're not mentioned. Mm-hmm. So the fact that he, that it was the ones who were mentioned are only Peter, John, and James, James the less, mm-hmm. uh, is, is pretty significant. Mm-hmm. It doesn't sound like Peter's just one, just one of the apostles, does it? No, he does. He does have a role of primacy, but and now I'm bamboozled with the when they. So when would he? He did appear to Simon. So Mary Magdalene went and told them he is risen, and then that's when they sprinted back. John. Then there's more primacy of Peter because John got there first, but he waited for Peter to enter first, and then. So was it then that our Lord appeared to Peter, or we don't know? No, no, they went back. They went back to uh, the upper room, scratching their heads. Okay. Hmm. Mm-hmm. 
my but, goodness. Mm-hmm. But in this in this period, uh, Peter is so so significant. Uh, mm-hmm. The post resurrection period and the post ascension period. Mm-hmm. Peter is so very very significant. Mm-hmm. But today, in our uh, reading from the Acts of the Apostles, of had Peter and John go to the temple. Mm-hmm a week after Pentecost, and we read about how, who worked the first miracle? Mm, Peter. Peter. Mm -hmm, That's right. Yeah, gold and silver I have not. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, arise and walk. He grabbed Mm -hmm. the crippled man by the wrist and then pulled him up. Yeah. It was was Peter who worked the first miracle. That's right. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene. Rise and walk. You know, I still like the old translation. Gold and silver I have not, but (laughs) in the name. Yeah, that uh, that sounds very poetic. Mm -hmm. Gold and silver I have not, but. It does. It does sound better. Mm Mm-hmm. And then what happens? Well, well, first of all, let's remember that week before, after the commotion on Pentecost morning and the crowd gathered outside, mm-hmm. uh, and the people wondering what's going on, what mm-hmm. is what's all this commotion about? Mm-hmm. Uh, then the apostles go out, and it is Peter who speaks to the crowd, mm-hmm. and. It's, there in that section, uh, it's interesting because uh, we have mentioned that Peter and the eleven, or Peter mm-hmm. and the other apostles. Right. Mm-hmm. We don't find at any point uh, another, like, James and the other apostles, mm-hmm. or yeah. John and the eleven. Mm-hmm. It's only that it's Peter and the other apostle, or Peter and the eleven. Mm-hmm. And so it was Peter who spoke on Pentecost, and at the end, uh, the people he explained to them what had happened, and concluded by saying, "This Jesus, whom you crucified, God has made Lord." And well, the word he used was a Messiah, which means anointed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they were cut to the heart, and they said to him, "Brothers, what are we to do?" Mm-hmm. And then Peter told them what they had to do. Mm-hmm. They had to repent. Mm-hmm. and be baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. Mm-hmm. And then uh, a week later, uh, Peter and John uh, were going to the temple. You know, I, I sometimes wonder if they were under the impression that uh, they were going to take over the temple. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. Maybe Why did so. they continue going to the temple? Right, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I really, really wonder if they thought the way things were going to unfold was they were going to convert everybody Mm -hmm. in Jerusalem and then they would run the show Mm -hmm. in the the temple. Mm -hmm. Because before our Lord ascended, he said to them, when the Spirit comes, you shall receive power and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, Mm -hmm. and to the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. I'll say they were getting ready. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Peter's making. Yeah. Peter's always making plans, and our Lord has to change them for him. <laughs> yeah, they were going to the t- at that uh, hour of prayer in the afternoon, mm-hmm. going t- to pray. Mm-hmm. Well, what happens? Well, uh, after he cured the, the uh, worked the first miracle and cured the cruel man, mm-hmm. and the man went berserk. He was jumping and shouting for joy, mm-hmm. and of course that attracted attention, just right, like right. a week before. All that commotion mm-hmm. uh, with the coming of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. had attracted yeah, attention. attention. And so mm-hmm. Peter had another audience mm-hmm. and he explained to them what had happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He, he said, he told them, and so into it, I didn't do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, and anyway, what happens? Uh, that's not in today's passage. What happens is, and by this time it's late in the afternoon, mm-hmm. and the temple police come. Mm-hmm to deal with uh, this this, uh, spontaneous Mm -hmm. uh, event there. Mm -hmm. And they lock up Peter and John. Mm -hmm. The next morning, Peter and John are taken before uh, the Sanhedrin. Mm -hmm. And Peter speaks, and John just stands there sort of respectfully. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the first time. 
because again, uh, later, all of the uh, 12, by this time, Matthias is one of them. Uh, we should take note of the fact that uh, after uh, the uh, ascension of our Lord, they returned to Jerusalem like he told them to do to await the coming of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And what took place? We read there in chapter 1, uh, I think it's chapter 1, maybe it's chapter 2 of the Acts of the Apostles that Peter said to them, that it's necessary to select a replacement for Judas. Mm-hmm. And then he told them what were the requirements. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what the two requirements were? No. That it be someone from among that original group of, bigger group of disciples from whom he had chosen the 12. Mm-hmm. Remember there were 70 disciples? Yes. Mm-hmm. And so it, somebody who had been on the scene since the days of John the Baptist and who had witnessed mm-hmm. uh, our, uh, our Lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, it may have been that it was on an occasion when our Lord appeared to 500 people because mm-hmm. uh, in the 15th chapter of his first letter to the Corinthians, which deals with the question of resurrection, not just our Lord's resurrection, but also ours, Mm -hmm. the resurrection of the dead that we say we believe in at the end of the creed. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, St. Paul gave a list, and it starts off with Peter. He Mm -hmm. appeared to him first, and he appeared Mm -hmm. to the other apostles, and he appeared to James, Mm -hmm. and then to 500 people at one time. Mm Some of whom have fallen asleep, but most are still with us. And last of all, there's one in the old translation, but there's one born out of time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he appeared to me, last mm-hmm. of all, because he was, not, he, said he was not worthy to be called an apostle because he had persecuted the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what so book is that? That's uh, early mm-hmm. in chapter 15 of St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Corinthians. Okay. You are so good. Oh, my goodness. Well, I used to give instructions to the converts, remember? Mm-hmm. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. When you do that up until the age of 80. <laughs> <laughs> You're still doing it. You kind of you mm-hmm. absorb something. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yep. Yeah, it's verse 26. They gave lots to them, and the lots fell upon Matthias. And he was counted with the 11. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, if you notice, yeah. Peter doesn't say to them, I've been thinking, mm-hmm. this, num- this number 11 is kind mm-hmm. of an uh, odd number, uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. literally speaking, uh, odd, <laughs> and symbolically mm-hmm. odd. And I'm sure the reason why our Lord chose the 12 apostles is because originally the first people of God was composed of the 12 tribes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And just like it wasn't accidental that he had 70 Mm-hmm. Uh, that pool of 70 disciples from mm-hmm. whom he chose the 12. Because remember, Moses had his group of 70 uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who right. assisted him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, everything there around the time of the uh, uh, resurrection and mm-hmm. then the aftermath, uh, mm-hmm. the ascension. Mm-hmm. And then the Pentecost, mm-hmm. we find who is at the center? Who is leading mm-hmm. the apostolic mm-hmm. band? It's mm-hmm. the same person over and over and over mm-hmm. and over. Yes, Peter stood up in the midst. That's right. Mm-hmm. Now let's deal with uh, what I mentioned before. Some people say, make a, make a big point about Peter having denied our Lord. Mm-hmm. But I think that is taken care of just before our Lord ascended mm-hmm. because he said to him three times, do mm-hmm. you love me? Uh-huh. Yes. Why, why three times? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't, wouldn't one be enough? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not if you denied him three times. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly. You see, a year earlier, when he had made the promises to Peter, mm-hmm. they were all referring to the future. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Um, blessed are you, Simon, uh, Lord Jonah, mm-hmm. for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father, and I say to you that you are Kepha, you are rock, and on this rock I will build my church. And then he says to him a little bit, I will, I 
will give to you the keys of the kingdom mm-hmm. uh, of heaven. And whatsoever you, um, this is once again referring to the future, huh? mm-hmm. bind on earth will be bound. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in mm-hmm. heaven. So that, that uh, was all referring to the future. Mm-hmm. So it could have been, even maybe in Peter's, uh, Peter's mind, but uh, he, because I messed up so badly, I wonder if, if those promises our Lord made still hold. Yeah. And, and uh, like any, any of us, great. any of us would want, any of us that would go through our mind. It is incredible. I'm just kind of dumbfounded at the mercy of God to give him thou, those three opportunities to use his own voice and that mouth that d- denied him to, to, to reaffirm his love to our resurrected Lord. Yeah. Mm-mm. And after Peter I love you. What did our Lord then say? Feed, feed my lambs, yes. feed mm-hmm. my sheep, mm-hmm. tend my sheep. Mm-hmm. Now, who who is doing this talking? The good shepherd. Mm-hmm. Who uh, yes. the good shepherd who, who feeds his sheep with all of himself. Mm-mm. He gives well, up his life for his sheep. Well, the good shepherd who had laid down his life for his flock. Mm-hmm. Uh, then isn't and is about to depart from them, then entrust them to Peter. Mm-hmm. He sure does. He well, sure our Lord does. wasn't a, literally a shepherd, he was a shepherd mm-hmm. of souls, not a shepherd of sheep. Mm-hmm. That's right. He was a carpenter, remember. Mm-hmm. And so, what he was doing was in the presence of the other, uh, other uh, ten, he was telling Peter. What I said to you still holds. Mm-hmm. And you see Peter acting. You see, everything after that confirms it. Mm-hmm. He's the one to whom our Lord appears first. Uh, then uh, Peter is the one who acts as if he has authority. Mm-hmm. Like in the question of the selection of Matthias. Mm-hmm. Now he's the one who speaks while the other ones stand, I mm-hmm. guess, respectfully, listening to him speak to crowds, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And so, just before he ascends into heaven, uh, he confirms uh, the promise that he had made uh, to Peter a year earlier. Mm-hmm. And so, also, notice, feed, feed. Mm-hmm. What's the significance of that? Uh, you little lambs and little souls have to be fed in order to nourish, to grow, fed to what? thrive. Fed with what? Fed with um, the bread of heaven. I would say the Eucharistic bread, who is our Lord. I'm going to differ with you. Okay. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> I have here in front of me the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, the beginning of chapter 3. Mm-hmm. Now, you know why he... One of the reasons why he wrote this, the first letter to the Corinthians, after he departed from them, uh, there were a lot of abuses that arose. Mm. And he castigates them in the first couple chapters. Mm-hmm. And then at the beginning of our chapter 3, he says, Brothers, I could not talk to you as spiritual people. Namely, what I have just, you know, we were addressed to. Mm-hmm. Um, I cannot speak to a spiritual people. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe he referred to him when he was there, even among them. I could not talk to you as spiritual people, but as fleshly people, mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. infants in Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess that's what he was when he was there in the mm-hmm. evangelized court. Mm-hmm. I fed you milk, not solid food, because you were unable to take it. Oh. Indeed, yeah, yeah. See, now he goes on to say, indeed, you are still not able, even mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. For you are still of the flesh. Mm-hmm. And then he goes on and gives the evidence. <laughs> While there's jealousy and rivalry among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving in an ordinary human way? Mm-hmm. And so on and so on and so on. Mm-hmm. Likewise, in uh, the letter to the Hebrews at the beginning of chapter, uh, let me see. No, not at the beginning, in the middle. Uh, middle of chapter 5, mm-hmm. verse 11. Mm-hmm. About this, we have much to say, and it is difficult to explain. For you have become sluggish in hearing, mm-hmm. although 
you should be teachers. Uh, by this time, you need to have someone teach uh, you again the basic elements of the utterances of God. You need milk mm-hmm. and not solid food. Mm-hmm. Everyone who lives on milk lacks experience of the word of, of righteousness, for he is a child. But mm-hmm. solid food is for the mature. Mm-hmm. For those whose faculties uh, are, are trained by practice to discern good and evil. Mm-hmm. You know, there's controversy. Some people uh, think that St. Paul wrote the letter to the Hebrews, others not. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you ever noticed, but uh, usually, and the, that's the reason why uh, it is the last of the letters. Mm-hmm. Uh, that St. Paul wrote. Mm-hmm. It's sort of, maybe so, maybe not. Right. Mm-hmm. But here, you, and one of the reasons is a lot of people say, well, the style is so different in Hebrews compared to the other letters of St. Mm-hmm. Paul. But mm-hmm. here is a similarity. Mm-hmm. Where then to the Corinthians, he used the example of their spiritual immaturity and their need for milk and mm-hmm. not solid food. Mm-hmm. That's true. So what are we talking about? We're talking about doctrine, huh? Mm-hmm. Doctrine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when our Lord said to Peter, before he ascended, to feed my lambs, feed my sheep, tend my sheep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've always understood that. He was telling him, you are the chief teacher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I understand. You above all right. are supposed to, huh? are supposed to mm-hmm. uh, be the... Uh, the teacher mm-hmm. among the twelve, mm-hmm. and therefore also, as was the way the successors acted mm-hmm. after Peter, they acted as if they had an authority superior to the authority of other successors of Peter, mm-hmm. namely other bishops. Mm-hmm. Well, those are some of the things that came to mind today, and uh, I used in my homily at uh, Mass this afternoon. Any well, comments? We've got a lot of food for thought tonight. My first comment is we should have asked St. Peter to pray for us, and oh my God. it would be so fitting and beautiful to ask our dear Lady of the Resurrection. Is there such a title, Our Lady of the Resurrection, to pray for the for us? If there's not a title, I think there ought to be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never heard it. <laughs> Yet. Yet. Well, you know, sometimes we here in the West uh, are uh, ignorant of mm-hmm. practices that are in our Eastern rites. That's right. And That's the exactly Eastern right. part of the church. Mm-hmm. For example, uh, you know, in the East, in the East, uh, Adam and Eve are regarded as great saints. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was surprised to learn that a little while ago. Mm-hmm. 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 There's a beautiful. Uh, reading we have on Holy Saturday mm-hmm. uh, in the Liturgy of the Hours. Mm-hmm. Our Lord has descended into limbo, and he goes in search of Adam. He mm-hmm. goes in search mm-hmm. of Adam, mm-hmm. and Adam is hiding. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's really, really beautiful, really powerful. In fact, two, in fact, two years ago, I, I read most of it uh, at... Uh, Mass on Easter Sunday. Oh, it wonderful. Is, wonderful. It is so, so, so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you ever have a chance, look that up. It's the, uh, the reading on... Uh, thing. Yes, yes, it's on Saturday morning. Saturday mm-hmm. morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am going to look it up. That's a wonderful idea. Well, and not only that, what would it, so after our Lord's, after our Lord died on the cross, and remember when all the salt, the t- so there was the earthquake, it went black, there was the earthquake, and then all the souls, you look around and you see people coming out of the tombs who had been dead. Oh my goodness, if that's not God, the people who weren't converted at that moment, if that's not God, what else is there? What else could there possibly be to convince you that this is God? Mm-mm-mm. Well, you know, people have agendas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And after 
after Pentecost, you know, Caiaphas and the others, they told Peter and the other apostles not even to mention our Lord's name mm-hmm. in the city. And, and what and what did Peter answer? Do you remember? No. Who are we to obey, God or man? Ooh, no wonder he's the boss. No wonder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In those cases where... Uh, first, just he and John, and then the second one, when he and the other apostles were hauled before this afternoon. Uh, that's why I said a little while ago, the other apostles seem to be just standing around respectfully while he is in charge, and he is the one who is their spokesman. Yeah, he's the voice. He is the voice, that's right. And notice, you don't get the impression that it's a timid voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't get that impression <laughs> at all. The fisherman, the fisherman with the timid voice, it doesn't work. Look, look how he concluded. Mm-hmm. How he concluded uh, when he said, uh, said to people there on uh, Pentecost Sunday. Mm-hmm. He, he con- you know, he gave them all the arguments, quoting uh, from, from Scripture, mm-hmm. uh, principally from the prophet Joel, and then also from uh, the psalm where... Uh, David wrote that God would not allow his uh, chosen one or whatever the title mm-hmm. to suffer corruption. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. said, look, David's tomb is still here, so he mm-hmm. couldn't have been writing about himself. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. And then he wound up and said, this Jesus whom you crucified, mm-hmm. yeah. God has made uh, Lord and anointed. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was somebody really dressing down that crowd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. He sure did. Mm-hmm. And likewise, when uh, they were hauled before the Sanhedrin, and, and they were told, don't even mention that man's name here in town, mm-hmm. Peter shot back, who are we to obey, mm-hmm. God or man? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those, are not, those, those are not the actions of it. The words of a timid person. No, not being, um, he's not Somebody skirting who with, been, the, go ahead. Too, Somebody who had been afraid of of, of servant girls <laughs> outside mm-hmm. of yeah. uh, outside of Annas's house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Remember when our, when Peter was there uh, warming himself when our Lord was inside? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He You're was right. timid. He was. He was terrified. That's right. He lied. Mm-hmm. He took it. He even 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 perjured himself. Mm-hmm. He took an oath. I don't know that man. Yeah. He sure now, did. that's when he was timid. Mm-hmm. But then afterwards, he certainly wasn't timid. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Praise oh, God. Oh, yeah. Before our Lord ascended, he told them to go back to Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. And he said, when the Spirit comes, you shall receive power, and mm-hmm. you shall be witnesses to me, etc. Mm-hmm. You could see who had the major power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like I said, the other apostles in the Acts, in the in the Gospels, and in the Acts of the Apostles, they're hardly mentioned. Mm-hmm. It's John and it's James, mm-hmm. except for Thomas. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will be uh, reading about uh, this coming Sunday. This Sunday, it won't be long. That's right. Mm-hmm. Oh my so goodness! I think we'll talk about the significance of some of the things that our Lord said there a week after his resurrection. Oh, good. Good, good, good. We are well, an Easter people. I think we're running people. about recent uh, limits today. <laughs> well, we, we have, but that doesn't, well, yeah, we, <laughs> we, I could talk all night, but that's not what we'll do because you and I both have other obligations and our listeners might get tired of hearing our voice that long. Well, I don't have a bunch of little kids to put to bed. <laughs> That's right. I don't uh, have a bunch now. I just have three le- three little left. Three little ones left. It's uh, all good. Thank you, Monsignor. Okay. And uh, St. Peter, pray for us. Amen. And fear not, little flock. It has pleased your Father to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah. We'll see you soon, friends. Bye-bye.